Praise God. We welcome everybody to this uh, series which we started a week ago on faith, on the theme activating your faith. We want to give a reminder, we started with the faith that leads us onto salvation, that leads man to salvation, the saving faith, the faith unto salvation, which is the beginning, which is the door. Uh, we elaborated on that uh, last week, and we are continuing today still on faith. We shall talk about the importance of faith, why faith, and how to grow in our faith. So uh, we, 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 we thank you all who have tuned in. We express our great gratitude to the technical team. May the uh, blessings of the Lord abound in your life. May God remember you for your faithfulness and for the price you are paying. Let's pray. Blessed Father, we thank you for the privilege, not only to know you, but to know you as Father and to serve you through your word. We thank you for the glad tidings. We thank you for the oracles that you spoke, for they are alive and they are powerful not only to save us, but to transform us into the resemblance of Christ. Father, use this word and do your work in the lives of all who will follow this message today, when, next Wednesday, or after. So that, O oh Lord, the fruit of the travail of the soul of Jesus Christ in their life, in their lives will be visible to the glory of God. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're talking about saving faith. The faith unto salvation. The faith unto salvation is such a wide theme and so critically important. Uh, we cannot talk about it even for a whole year. I want to remind you that uh, that theme, just that theme, if the theme that has been the center of the ministry of many men of God, whom we call, whom the Bible calls evangelist. They are focused on the saving theme. I think of great evangelists like T.L. Osborne, great evangelists like as Billy Graham, like Reinhard Bonnke. The theme they developed on which they expounded was saving faith. So saving faith is so big. Uh, and uh, so important, we shall we just introduce it with prayer and hope that you listening to us will access the salvation that God made available through Jesus Christ our Lord, through his humiliation, his sacrificial death, his atoning sacrifice on the cross, the blood that he shed, his life that he sacrificed, so that you and I and all the sons of Adam may be saved, reconciled to God, and enter the destiny that God has prepared for man. For man is the summum of God's creation. So saving faith is very, very important. Our prayer also is that you listening to us, who acknowledges that God is calling you particularly to evangelism in the five-fold or four-fold ministry, we pray that you will exercise that faith and, first of all, acknowledge, receive your salvation, then awake to the righteousness that God gives, then expound on that and develop your ministry around the saving faith and so that God may use you and lead many multitudes to know him as he has done for many people in years past right from the days of Philip, and so on. So uh, saving faith cannot be treated in um, a few weeks or a few months. Um, church leaders know that when they focus on saving, on saving faith, on evangelism, on the gospel, on the gospel message, they will lead their people to soak in the message so that the message becomes part of them, so that now they can overflow with it spontaneously, because from the abundance of the heart, says the Lord, the mouth speaketh. 
So we may encourage people to go evangelize, encourage them. And uh, if the word has not, has not taken possession of them, evangelism will be sporadic or may not even happen, which is the case for most people in the church, where uh, if you dare ask, how many of you led somebody in the Lord last year or this year? You will be amazed. You'll be shocked by how few there are who lead people to the Lord, people who are established in Christ. You, you may ask and go back as far back as two years, three years, five years, even ten years. And the shocking thing, the very painful thing to God especially, is that many remained in the household of God for many, many years and don't know the, the experience and the joy of leading somebody to Christ. The joy of being an instrument God, God, that God uses to reconcile somebody to the Father, to lead somebody to the blessings of the miracle of new birth. So it is important to stay there. The, 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 the secret of it all is that as we tease you, as we introduce you, as we exhort you, through these, uh, these teachings, you will uh, 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 grow in your appetite to know more and to exercise more, even as the Bible exhausts each one of us to exercise ourselves unto godliness. Praise God. So now we shall talk more of faith, and to begin with, we shall read, talking still about saving faith. There's something that we must uh, emphasize. Uh, we shall later see the privileges and the rights of a child of God to encourage you. But now it, the condition is to truly be a child of God. The Lord Jesus Christ talking to some uh, Pharisees and Sadducees told them, you are not far from the kingdom, which mean, means you are almost saved. So don't just be almost saved. Enter into the kingdom and go deep in the kingdom and uh, 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 check with your conscience, with your spirit, in your loneliness, whether you be really in the faith, that is in the saving, in the saving faith. And if you are not in the saving faith, it is very, very simple to just take Jesus Christ as Lord, confess his name, and whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will not be confused, will be saved. It is just one, one sentence away. You say a sentence from your heart. You believe that Jesus Christ, who died, who was buried, who was, was raised again by the Holy Spirit on the third day, who lived again on planet Earth for 40 days, who was exalted in heaven, is alive. You believe that he's alive, that you are dealing with the, li the living God. Then you take him as master of your life, as Lord of your life, as the one to whom you will give total and continuous obedience and increasing obedience as you grow until he comes or until you go to meet him. Uh, let us read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Matthew 7, 13. The saving faith, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The straight gate is the narrow gate. Entering through the narrow gate requires that you get rid of anything which may be even useful, which may not be sinful, but which will not help you enter and which will not help you run the race. So you get rid of anything that will uh, 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 clock your life, that will load you, so that you, because you are entering the race, you enter through the narrow gate, to the straight gate, because this is a warning, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So multitude, the majority of people, maybe 99%, are going to the, 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 the wide, the broad gate where everything is allowed, where everything is checked, where 
they are everything the, the, the requirements are so are made so easy the standards are so accessible and it is a pleasure to work there no that way leads to destruction as the lord jesus christ himself warned us and he says many there be which go there at many that is not your portion in jesus name you will not follow the broad way that leads to destruction. So uh, you access, then you continue the race, and you increase your pace, your speed as the day go, the days go go on. That is, uh, we shall share on that when we come to discipleship, because faith to renounce self, to renounce the world, to renounce the devil. And faith to receive God's life go hand in hand. Faith to renounce all what all those useful, useless things that the devil presents us as indispensable. And faith to receive life. Faith to do violence to yourself. And faith to enter the narrow gate. They go hand in hand. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ uh, insisted, saying, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and let him take his cross daily. You don't take your cross today and then you lay it on the floor the next day and you forget. You only remember that one day you made a prayer. That is not it. May we, tell, may, may we share with you lovingly and by the grace of God that it is taking your cross daily. What is your cross? Your cross is not the cross you wear on your chest. Your cross is whatever goes against your own natural, personal preferences, desires, ambitions. Whatever goes against your will, where you should keep quiet, you keep quiet. Because the Lord says, don't speak. Where you should not take, take this decision or do this thing, you don't do it where you must part company with certain people, some people who lead you constantly to sin. You part company from them. That is the straight gate. Praise God. And the grace of God will lead you and enable you by the Spirit of God, not even to find it as the straight gate anymore, because as you move, it becomes your own gate. You get used to it. You enjoy it. It becomes your way of life. And uh, the uh, uh, broad gate, the broad way is, becomes disgusting to you. Now, let us talk about the importance of faith. Faith is a, especially a New Testament dynamic, the importance of faith. It is a New Testament dynamic. In the Old Testament, we read in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20, Deuteronomy 22, 22 verse, 20, verse 20, where Moses composed a song a few days before his departure to be with the Lord. When he had finished his ministry, he had led the children of Israel out of bondage, out of slavery in Egypt. But he confessed something that was quite striking. And he said it was a song. I will hide my face. He was speaking on, on behalf of the Father. The Father said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Why? For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Children in whom is no faith. We said last time that God's word is loaded with life, loaded with faith. God's word is loaded with God's faith. God is a faith God. His words are faith words. So we say faith according to what we read to in uh, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing that word. And because that word, as Jesus Christ described it, which is spirit and which is life, is loaded with God's type of faith with the supernatural faith, with the spiritual faith, the spiritual ability to believe God beyond what your senses say. 
you exercise yourself to believe him beyond your senses, to believe him beyond the evidence that you see in front of you, to believe his word as final. Because God's word, God's word is not only alive, it's only loaded with faith. God's word is a decree. Every word of God is a decree. It is established. It's a law. The Bible says in the book of uh, 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 Psalms that he has exalted his word even above his name. God has exalted his word. So he himself obeys his word. He obeys his word. Now, he said about the children of Israel that there were people in whom there was no faith. And we understand. We understand because Paul explains in uh, uh, the letter to the Corinthians that the natural man, which they call in French the, the beast man, the animal man, cannot understand the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritually dead cannot discern the things of God. So the children of Israel, none of them was born again, of course, because the price that Christ paid through his redeeming sacrifice was not yet paid. And then Pentecost had not yet taken place. So it was not, they were not born again. They, their, their faith was manifested in their simple obedience to God. Most men of God, we see uh, Moses, uh, Abraham, and the others, heard God audibly and just obeyed. Where Abraham became the father of faith was because he believed beyond obeying God's instructions, he believed God's promises. We shall see that. And that was accounted to him as righteousness. The promise, namely, that he will be a father of many nations, that he will, be, um, he will have a child even at his old age with his wife Sarah at all. He believed that promise, that promise. And even after God gave that child Isaac, he still believed that God was able to raise him when God asked him to take that child to Mor Mor Morija and sacrifice him. He went and believed that God who promised that he would be a father of many nations had the, the power even to raise that child from the dead. So faith is a New Testament reality. Uh, in the Old Testament, there are very few passages where you find faith. Uh, after this passage where uh, Moses talks about the faithlessness of the children of Israel, now they talk about Abraham, who was an exception. God called him to leave his country, to leave his family, to leave his home, and to go to a country which he did not know. God did not specify where it was, but God only told him that you will possess that land where you are going to. That land is not your land, but you will possess it. He believed God's promises. And that is Abraham's faith, which made Abraham the father of faith. So, um, because salvation was uh, acquired by the blood of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice of his life, and that the, the Holy Spirit came after that. The Holy, Holy Spirit came with now the power to recreate man, to recreate man's spirit. And the, the recreated spirit is what makes man a faith man. The born again child is a faith man. He, that's why he's called the child of Abraham. We read in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8, that... Uh, by that grace, all uh, by that grace of God through Jesus Christ, all were offered salvation. All were offered salvation. Salvation is God's offer to all, because God desires no man to be lost, to be damned, to go to hell. But that salvation that God offers is received by man's hand, the hands that man stretch, stretches to God to receive that salvation can be called faith. The hand that receives that salvation, which is received through proclamation, which is received in the heart, 
that hand is called faith. So it is not, salvation was granted to everybody, but it's not everybody who is saved. You are saved legally because the price was paid. Salvation was made available to you and I for you and I to go each one in turn and receive that salvation. It is very, very important. Salvation is not just universal because Christ died for all. And in 1 Corinthians, Chapter 12, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, we read, Whereof, wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost by the Holy Ghost that came at Pentecost. Hence comes, you see, the great uh, difference between the old dispensation and the new dis dispensation where we are. Uh, we, we have the Holy Ghost available. He is with us and he wants to, uh, he is for us. He wants, to, he wants our salvation, our blessings, but it is impossible for man to say that G to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. That's why it is important to pray, because no evangelist, no man, no matter how talented, no matter how gifted or how intelligent, can cause any other man to say to confess that Jesus is Lord. If a man will confess from the heart that Jesus is Lord, it must be the work of the Holy Spirit. Hence comes the importance of prayer in faith, of prayer even in the work of evangelism, so that the Holy Spirit will do it. It must be done by the Holy Spirit. It cannot be done by man himself. It is not by your decision. It is by the Holy Spirit. Somebody described that salvation is like a door. When you stand in front of the door, it is written, come in. Decide, come in, come through the street gate. But when you cross the door, you look back and the door is closed. You read that, you read there that it is not your doing, it is God's doing. And they don't contradict. It is not your doing, it is God who does it, who worked in your heart to will, to confess, and to do according to his pleasure. Hence comes the importance. I want to insist on the importance of faith, so that it will be, the Lord will do it. Uh, as we have read in Romans 10, 9 to 10, we shall not come back to that. So now, after that salvation, you are made righteous, because you are made a child of Abraham. Just as Abraham believed God's promise, and that faith was accounted to him as righteousness, you also believed God's gift of salvation, believed God's word, and that faith is accounted to you as righteousness. Now, once you are righteous, once you are righteous, now um, you are, the word is divided into two main groups, the righteous, who are the children of God, who are born in God's, into God's family, and the unrighteous, who are the other sheep about whom the Lord Jesus Christ talked, who are still out of the fold, who need to be brought in. But in the meantime, they are not children of God. They are still children of the deceiver, of the evil one. Uh, generally, people are offended when uh, they are said that, but it is not you saying it, it is a painful reality, of, or, although uh, that's not the first thing that you should go telling people uh, that they are children of the devil. It may not sound very wise. There are opportunities when you must make it clear, the Spirit will lead you. But now, salvation divides the world clearly into two groups, the righteous and the unrighteous. The righteous and the unrighteous. Now, the righteous are called in the book of 
the letter, the epistle to the Corinthians to awake to righteousness, to know who they are, to know what they have, to know their position in Christ, to know they are children of God, to know they belong to, to God's kingdom, to, to know that the Father loves them just as he loved Jesus, to know that they enjoy the same privileges that Jesus Christ enjoyed and that Paul enjoyed and that the great men of God in the Bible, like uh, Stephen, like Daniel, the privileges that they enjoy, that those privileges make them supernatural. Awakening to righteousness is knowing who you are. We shall insist on that because that's what the Bible calls mind renewal. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, where he says, do not conform. Romans 12, 1 to 2, we shall read it. The Bible says, the, uh, Apostle Paul talking to the Romans, and he was talking to believers who were already made righteous, who were children of God, who were members of the household of God. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beg you, therefore, brethren, please, brethren, by the mercies of God, I beg you that you, ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Having entered through the narrow gate, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That is, you know, a sacrifice was to put over the altar and to be slaughtered. A living sacrifice is put over the altar, but is not slaughtered. He is now living not uh, his own life, but the life of him who spared him, who saved him, the life of Jesus. I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Our reasonable service, verse 2, please. Our reasonable service is, first of all, to present our bodies, uh, our whole being, spirit, soul, and body, our whole being to God, a living sacrifice. It's something... That is, it is advisable to do every morning. When you wake up, say, Father, this day, I present myself to you as a living sacrifice, holy, separated from sin, sin in thoughts, sin in, sin in words, sin in actions, sin through compromise, sin, sin through, sins through uh, any shameful or wrong thoughts. I present myself to you a living sacrifice. The Bible continues, Paul continues in verse 2, and be not conformed to this word. Do not conform to this system. John told, told us in his epistle that this system is all under the sway of Satan. Satan was defeated. He knows his time is short. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will come he will be judged, he will be cast in the lake of fire, but he is still the God of this world with small g, small j. The, uh, Paul is begging us not to conform to this world, but he said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To be able to, to prove, that's to demonstrate, to manifest, to uh, 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 the will of God through your life, in your private life, in your home, outside, at your job place, in the church, on the road, to manifest it so that uh, your neighbors can see Jesus in you, his meekness, his love, his truthfulness, his joy, his humility, to prove that you need, you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are trying to conclude, not to conclude, but to bring out uh, important tips, important assets, important points concerning the saving faith, so that you will be saved indeed, so that you, there will be no doubt in your heart neither in the heart of those who know you. In fact, one day I received, I, I, I told my son that's the best compliment that I've ever heard. Our last son, who is 36, 
one day told me very, very calmly. He said, Daddy, you have changed. You have changed for the better. I say, wow. Because he knew me when I was a carnal believer. Uh, then he knew me after the process of my transformation. I told him that's the greatest compliment. But to be transformed like that, by the, it is only by the renewing of your mind. Um, we may start another series. That other series will be entitled The New Man. You know, the new birth uh, produces a new man. And new men produce a new race. That's the church. And the new race grows into the resemblance of Christ, is transformed into the image of Christ by only one way, the renewing of the mind. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. As you think, so will you speak. As you speak, so will you act. So you, you must be transformed in your mind so that your talking is transformed, so that now your actions and your behavior and your habits are transformed. If you are not transformed through the renewing of your mind, if your mind is not transformed, uh, there's a man of God, uh, Miles Monroe, who talked much about that, about uh, 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 colonization. Colonization only succeeded in the colonized countries of Africa and everywhere because the colonizer, the colonizers understood this principle. You must begin by changing people's mind. You must begin by inculcating your values into their mind. Once you have inculcated their, your values into their mind, they will follow you effortlessly. They may even champion those values. They may even beat you on those values. Values. That's what the colonized do. You know, that's, the, uh, uh, that's it. Now for us, we must allow the word of God through the spirit of life, through the spirit of power, to transform us and renew our mind. If our mind is not renewed, if our minds are not renewed, no matter how we repent and pray and lament and cry and make resolutions every uh, 1st January and decide that it will no longer happen and weep and write, and we shall not be transformed. No one is transformed like uh, that way. The only way that the Bible uh, gives for men, for believers to be transformed is by the renewing of the mind. God transforms your spirit through new birth and gives you a brand new spirit according to the, pro the prophecies of Ezekiel and according to uh, the, the, the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. God does that, performs that wonderful miracle. We talked about it. Now, man is a spirit, but he has a soul. And what is in the spirit must cross through the soul to manifest in the physical life, in the body, in the words we speak, in our tongue, in our choices, in our actions. If the, 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 the mind, which is the door to the soul, the soul is, we, can, we cannot go into the study of spirit, soul, and body. Uh, if the mind and the emotions and the will are not submitted to the born again spirit, and they are submitted when the mind, which is the door of the, to the soul, is transformed, then the life of the believer will remain the same. We may wonder whether he was ever saved, and he may, be re he may remain the same and then start regressing and abounding more and more in the flesh, doing more and more the things that he used to do as an unbeliever. And we may say he was never saved. In, mo in many cases, uh, he was saved. They were saved. It's only that they failed year upon year for uh, one year, 10 years, 20 years. They failed in the renewing of the mind. Therefore, they, they did not put on the mind of Christ. Therefore, the spirit could not operate in their lives. Therefore, the life that is in the born-again spirit could not manifest in their, in their active, practical life, in their talking, in their everything. So the only way to be saved 
to have your soul saved, because your spirit was saved by new birth, through new birth, but to have your soul saved is only by the renewing of the mind. There is no other place in all of the Bible, in all of the New Testament, where they give us the recipe, where God gives us the recipe to be transformed. It is only here in Romans chapter two. Uh, it is emphasized and said in all, in various ways in other parts of the Bible, in other books of the Bible. Um, no, so uh, we are. Let us read this passage in Romans five one. Yes, we read. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, when you are justified, one thing you notice is that you have peace with God. And the peace that you have with God produces in you the peace of God. You go to bed and you sleep of the sleep of the righteous. You are at peace with yourself. You are at peace with everybody. You are forgiven everybody. You are at peace with God. And that produces increasingly the peace of God in you. And uh, only the, medic, the scientists can tell, or tell us how indispensable is this peace of God in all of our lives, even in our physical health. So you have the peace of God. That's one of the benefits, uh, the blessings of new birth. Now, we say we will talk a bit, we shall, we shall introduce the importance of faith. When we come next time, uh, we shall uh, elaborate on that further. Um, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, is the next verse that we are going to read. Habakkuk uh, prophesied this truth when he said, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Yes, of course. One thing that characterizes the unrighteous, the lost, the spiritually dead is pride. His soul is lifted up in him. He is inflated inside as a balloon. But the Bible says, as concerns the just, they shall live by faith. You are saved by faith to live by faith. Life by faith will produce abundant fruit. Life that does not produce abundant fruit is life that is not yet fully and increasingly lived by faith. That's the law. That was prophesied right from the Old Testament. The righteous shall live by faith. And... Uh, 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 Paul emphasizes it again in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Please note this. If you would meditate on it and do it and apply it, because one way to reject the word of God, it's very, very simple. It's very simple to reject the word of God. As uh, I heard a man of God preach not long ago, one simple way to reject the word of God Listen to it, listen to it, be excited, scream, shout, with, but don't do it. One way to reject the word of God is don't just do it. Hear it and then uh, follow your Bible, go home and continue your life. You have rejected the word of God. Just as the Jews rejected the incarnate word of God about whom it is said, he came to his own, and his own received him not. That was the incarnate word of God. When you reject the revealed word, you have also done exactly as the Jews did. He came as the incarnate word, and he was rejected, pushed out, crucified, and gotten rid of. When you hear the word and don't do it, don't strategize, even while you are hearing, strategizing how to do it, how to apply it, how to obey it, how to experience it, how to live it out, you have just decided to reject it. But that's not your portion in Jesus' name. 
Paul said to the Galatians, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. The most important thing in Jesus Christ is faith. And how does faith work? It works by love. We shall come back to that. We, shall, we could spend an hour uh, commenting on that. We are talking about the importance of faith. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans 14, 23. And he that doubted is damned if he eats, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatever you do while doubting, while hesitating, while having a, a bad conscience, is, just know that it is sin. Faith will give you an assurance in your inner man, an assurance in your heart, a peace in your conscience. For us, we are, who are born again. If you don't have that, don't just do it. Don't pretend. Don't uh, 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 play the religious politics. Don't pretend to agree when you don't agree. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Whether it is eating or posing one act or the other, or doing one thing or the other, or the, when you are hesitating, just leave it. Don't do it. No matter who asks you to do it. And that's where, uh, the domain where many uh, sins need to go and uh, spend time before God about those things that they have done habitually, not of faith, but just of convenience, of habit, or just to please man, or just uh, to look good, not to lose face, faith. Uh, whatever is not of sin, we are talking about the importance of faith. That's why this teaching on faith is uh, very, very critical in our uh, spiritual mountaineering as we are mounting, growing in the Lord. Faith is critical. We are the faith people. We are the people of faith. We are the children of faith. The, 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 the church is called the household of faith. So the faith is so important. We read in Hebrew chapter 11, that we know very, very well, verse six, verse 6. It is written, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Wow. If you will not please God, then why come to him? Why talk to him? If you are not pleasing to God, if uh, you open your mouth to pray and he turns his face, his face away from you, if you are not pleasing, if your words are words of faithlessness, if your songs are songs of Unbelief. What is the use of wasting your time? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Again, Hebrew eleven thirty nine talks about the saints of the Old Testament, Testament, and these all having obtained a good report through faith. They obtained a good report through faith. We think of Henoch, who obtained a good report and he was so pleasing to God that God raptured him. Enoch did not die and Enoch was no, no more because God had raptured him. May I provoke us onto faith, onto the importance of faith so that we, we work on our faith. How do we work on our faith? We shall see it. We work on our faith by using it. We work on our faith by exercising it. We work on our faith by obeying God increasingly, even though it may appear as unpopular, even though we may be hated and persecuted. We work on our faith when we resolve to obey God in all circumstances. Uh, to summarize what we were saying, saving faith led us to new birth. And that new birth was a birth into the 
fam the fa family of the father, the birth into a new life in a new family with a new father, with new brothers and sisters, with a new destiny, with a new destination, with a new values, with new habits. That we must learn to grow in faith. That, those are the conditions. The, our growing in faith is the main co condition for a life that is fruitful, as we said. A life that sees miracles. Uh, we have entered a season of the supernatural. Uh, Bishop Robinson does not cease to emphasize, to insist on that. The season of the supernatural is the season where we must now walk in faith because God, who is no respecter of persons, is a respecter of faith. I learned that from Brother Corey Blake. God is no respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. Whether that faith be manifested by a child, a woman, a man, a youth, or an old man, God is a respecter of faith. If God will see a faith man or a faith woman, God will ad identify with such. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ uh, came and died. So that faith is what leads us in the dramatic confession of water baptism, which we, we may one day have the opportunity to expand. It's, it's very important. Some people think it is elementary. It is not elementary. It's the first act of obedience that will be followed by many, many other acts of faith. It is faith. It is faith to say, here is water, as the Ethiopian eunuch said, why am I not baptized? It is uh, dramatically confessed in water baptism, as we saw in Mozambique, many people be getting baptized in the sea. It was dramatic, it was great. Then it is continuously celebrated in the breaking of bread that confesses our ident identification with Christ henceforth, continuously celebrated in the broken, breaking of bread in Holy Communion. Then it is it grows as we are transformed through the renewal of our mind knowing who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we are called to, who Christ is to us, whom do we represent, why do we live, what is our mission, what is our destiny, what is our call, which is the same call as the call of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, again, we thank you for this time and for these few things that we shared about faith. Lord, you have a thousand times, 10,000 times more things to teach your children about faith. We pray, O oh Lord, that having kind of stirred them, provoked them unto good works, they'll go to your word and in their secret times, in hours, rising up early in the morning, going to bed, to bed late at night, they will plunge into your word, which is the word of faith. They will receive more. They will expound more on this. They will grow in, in faith. They will, Lord, see the fruits of faith. The fruits of faith in, in many domains, in their individual life, in their family lives, in their ministries, in the winning of soul, in their health, in their provision, in their finances, in, the, in anything that they touch. Oh, Lord, having become pleasing to you. Oh, that you manifest your goodness, your love, agape love, supernatural love in their lives and use them as instruments that represent Christ in their generation and that make great impact to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen.